the Go Gopher Podcast with Mike Grimm, episode number 130. I am Mike Grimm, voice of the Golden Gophers, and welcome back to our podcast. We have a unique podcast this week as we talk to Gopher super fan and super supporter Brian Slipka. He's the CEO of True North, a major booster of the Gophers, and one of our primary sponsors here on the Go Gopher Podcast. Brian is all about servant leadership and running his many companies in a way that inspires. He's now written a book called Winsome, and we're going to chat with him about the book and about the five things he cites in the book as proven life strategies to win in relationships. We'll also chat about Brian's close friendship with Gopher football head coach P.J. Fleck and many other things on this week's Go Gopher podcast. Stick around and have a listen. I know you'll enjoy the show this week. Our Go Gopher podcast is presented, in fact, by alumni-owned Sunbelt Business Advisors and True North Mergers and Acquisitions. If you're a business founder planning to exit your business, start by contacting Sunbelt Business Advisors and True North Mergers and Acquisitions. Sunbelt serves more businesses up to $5 million in revenue than anyone, and True North M&A serves companies with revenues up to $150 million. You can get a confidential, no-cost, no-obligation business valuation started today. Hey, make the most of your life's work. Visit sunbeltminnesota.com or tnma.com today. Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union is also a big sponsor of the Go Gopher podcast. Life math is complicated, and Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union makes it easier with local financial experts available to help in person or virtually. You can go to affinityplus.org slash go gophers for more info. They also have an award-winning mobile app, so check that out. We're podcasting episode 130 from the Aquarius Home Services studio. We invite you to click the subscribe button to the Go Gopher podcast. It's free to do so. You can also go back and listen to previous Go Gopher podcasts. Last week, for example, we had our Kansas City Connection visits with two KC natives, wide receiver Daniel Jackson and left tackle Ariante Ursary. They were very compelling. I know you'll enjoy the chats. Go back and have a listen if you missed last week's episode. This week, we're going to learn five proven life strategies to win in relationships with the author of Winsome, Super Gopher fan Brian Slipka from True North. He'll join me next. I'm Clay Geary, walk-on, turn scholarship, wide receiver for Gopher football. And I'm Ben Utech, U of M alumni, Super Bowl champion, and Tony Dungy Uncommon Award winner. We understand championship culture, which is why we're part of the True North family of companies. True North invests in only elite teams, like the champion team at Sunbelt Business Advisors, Minnesota's largest seller of companies. To learn more about True North and our diverse family of independently owned companies, visit truenorthequitypartners.com. Get a great return on your investment with a Royal Credit Union certificate. Choose a 5.05% annual percentage yield 13-month certificate or a 4.75% annual percentage yield 18-month certificate. Royal certificates have no minimum opening balance and a locked-in rate for guaranteed earnings. Open a certificate at any Royal office or online at rcu.org slash certificate saver. Early withdrawal penalties could reduce earnings in principal. APY accurate as of 7-16-24. Insured by NCUA. It's episode number 130 of the Go Gopher podcast. We've got a unique approach this week. We are going to talk some gophers. We'll talk some football, baseball, who knows what we'll hit on. Uh, we just heard a commercial with uh, Clay Geary and Ben Utech on the podcast. And they, of course, work with True North and Sunbelt, and they are one of our major sponsors. And the guy who's in charge of all of that is Brian Slipka, the CEO of True North. And he is our guest this week. You've got a new book. You're a big-time gopher supporter, a supporter of the podcast, and I think um, we've got some fun to chat about here today and some useful things. Here. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. This is we got a, we got a lot to talk about. Like we were saying we could probably talk for three or four we hours could. if we, we really could. wanted to. We could make this a multi-week uh, effort for sure. Um, well, first of all, good to see you. Um, how's your summer going? It's going great. It's been it's been kind of a grind, a lot of business-related stuff, but the weather. I, I don't know about uh, wait, how you feel about the weather, but I, I love this balance of rain and then healthy dose of sun. Healthy dose of rain, healthy dose. Of, I mean, it's it's been a great, yeah. great summer for for us Minnesotans. Yeah, and it's just the, the lawns look good, the gardens oh. look good, the flower beds is wherever you just look out on campus. Here we're recording on campus in in our little podcast studio. You walk across campus, man, it's beautiful. This but, morning I was waking up. You know, I got up about five thirty, and I I look go outside my door, and I see the sun rising above the clouds. I'm just like, oh, this is so much fun. Like I love getting up in the morning in the summertime. Yeah. it's a lot easier to get up early in the morning in the summertime. 
time I see that sunrise. And <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, you have a, a deeply personal connection to the Gophers, which we're going to get into. I mentioned Geary and UTech. Tell us what the, we, we heard the commercial, and we hear it every week, um, and they're still involved in the company. I mean, you mentioned to me a few weeks ago that Clay's maybe one of your rising stars within the company, and Ben is your culture leader. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, both of those guys are just amazing human beings. We're super blessed to have them on the team. Clay, Clay is one of those guys where he was a sixth year and actually became a seventh year yeah. football player. Stars a walk on earned yeah. scholarship. Oh yeah. yeah. And if you guys haven't heard Clay's story, it's, it's awesome. I mean, Clay's Clay's such a wonderful human being in so many ways. I mean, he's got, he's got a good worldview on how, how to approach life and how to approach relationships, how to approach people. And then professionally, of course, is extremely high ceiling uh, talent uh, for us and at, at True North and specifically Sunbelt and True North M&A. Uh, but you know, Clay's, Clay's story is actually a good one that Gopher fans would appreciate, which actually ties into some of the other stuff we're going to talk about. You know, Clay was a fifth and sixth year uh, player, was getting injured, but uh, had gotten injured a lot. So I had redshirted and medical redshirt, all that sort of stuff. Uh, was a walk-on turned scholarship player, wide receiver, was a contributor to the team. Um, one, of, one of the, you know, one of the key players yeah. uh, in, the, in the 11 and two season uh, as well. And, um, and what, but he hadn't, because of that, he had never really gotten a lot of job experience or work experience. And so uh, he was applying for internships and we have a we have a uh, we have an internship program, and he applied for it, and we initially uh, weeded him out. We actually filtered him out. And if it wasn't for two people, PJ, yeah, as well as Tyler Hartman, who uh, runs the uh, Athletes in Action uh, ministry on campus, those two people individually reached out to to, to my team, uh, PJ to me, and then Tyler to, to some of our people, and said, "Hey, you got to look at this guy. Like this guy applied and he and he didn't get passed. Like you got to look at this. This, this. this guy has some true north DNA." And so fast forward, um, we 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 t- bring him in. He wows everybody. We're like, well, "How do we miss this guy?" And uh, but he hadn't. It's because his resume. He right. hadn't had a lot of time to build up a resume of business experience or any even just work jobs. You know, during college. College. And so anyway, long story short, you know, we, we bring him in, he thrives, he does a great job. And now he's one of our key contributors and a, definitely a rising star within our analyst team at uh, True North m and And the story I, I want all the listeners to hear is like, man, like if you're a business leader, I mean, these, these student athletes have a lot of skills, like a ton of skills that can be deployed in the workforce. And uh, frankly, they're uniquely positioned because of their team, you know, a lot of the sports that they participate in, and especially a guy like Clay, you know, being a part of the road about culture for all these years, um, h- how he was able to bring that to true north. And with, especially with a lot of our worldviews with PJ and I and, and how we go about leading our businesses or, 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 or teams, a ton of alignment. And anyway, just a, a shameless plug for like these student athletes. Yeah. They, they need to gain business experience too. And it's a, it's a great opportunity to, 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 to really uh, get some really good talent to help you out with your businesses. Yeah. And you think about what uh, an athlete is through they they they're going to be committed they're going to be loyal they're going to work hard right if they're successful athletes those are qualities they have to have and i would think that would translate to any profession let alone oh, business very right? transferable very yeah. transferable and, and it's, it's just so evident so then so that's clay and then and then uh ben i mean just has been a a great friend of mine for many many years and as he is coming in uh, to be our culture chief culture officer it's it's had a transformative effect as we've grown and then now now he's starting to uh he's starting to roll out what uh and he'll you'll hear about in the months and years to come culture operating system that he's working on that's going to be i think transcendent and you know all across the country and world and so he's doing some special things i'm excited to see where that takes him yeah he's such a talented guy too and um you can tell he's 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 he has the gift of gab uh there's some substance there though it's not just talk. Um, he, he, he walks the walk, can sing, can, I mean, he could be a preacher if he wanted to. I know oh, he's given sermons. Yeah, he, he, you can know. Do it. he can do it all. He's a multidimensional yeah. guy for sure. In the commercial we hear every week, he talks about that he's a Dungy award winner. Um, and of course he played for Tony Dungy, won the Super Bowl with the Colts. And you have a connection too with Tony Dungy, the former Gopher quarterback. Uh, take me through how that kind of started. And um, you guys each year have a yeah have a big deal going. Yeah, now. we sure do. So yeah, Tony, obviously for all of us, Minnesotans has, uh, will always have a special place in all of our hearts because of what he did for the Gophers, you know, back in the late seventies. And then of course, what he went on to do with the Steelers as a player, 
And then, of course, as a coach, including as a defensive coordinator for the Vikings, which yes. a lot of people forget before going on to Tampa Bay and 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 uh, the Colts and winning a Super Bowl with the Colts and Peyton Manning and Ben Utech and others, right? But, you know, um, really my story with Tony uh, started in about, I think, 2016 or 17, where I, I as a young business leader, supported uh, a table at the Uncommon Award Dinner because I was I had read his books and I was really I had always loved Tony. And uh, just as he was a great role model for me, mentor, mentor to me from afar. Right. And so I as a business leader, I was like, I want to sponsor a table and bring people to this thing. And and uh, I was just um, amazed by the by the by the dinner. And it was highly impactful for me as I was becoming a um, going off on my own uh, with True North. And so fast forward um, a couple of years later, Tom Lamphere, who is the who, who, who he and Tony are the ones that started this on Common Award Dinner which awarded, basically it awards an athlete or a coach or somebody in the world of sport like James Brown's one as the you know broadcaster, um, demonstrating what it means to be uncommon in today's society. In other words, not always just following the crowd and doing what everybody says, you know, uh, but doing what you know in your heart to be the right thing to do and uh, from a leadership perspective and from an athletic perspective, that sort of thing. And everybody, every award winner has a different story. So so I, I support this table for a couple of years. And finally, Tom, Tom and Tony corner me and say, hey, like you've been doing this for a while. Like, you know, would you want to help out with them uh, with this in a greater capacity? And of course, I had gone off on my own with the businesses. And long story short, you know, I like to joke, I'm kind of the token young guy. Um, you know, you got you know, Tony and Tom, they're getting a little bit older. And and, uh, and 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 so we've, my company's come alongside to help the Uncommon Award Dinner and the Uncommon Fund, which is a 501c3 now that we've started uh, to help Tony. But basically it raises money. And the whole point of this Uncommon Award Dinner, it raises, recognizes somebody, but it raises money for the um the NFL Coaches Fellowship, as well as a lot of other things, including uh, U of M wrestling, because Tom was a wrestler for the Gophers, Tom Lamphere, in the, in the in the late 70s. And so this story has a lot of Gopher connections. Yeah. And that's why Tony and Tom are uh, you know are so tight. They have this common bond of being a Gopher that really bonds them. And of course, uh, Tom is loves the uh, U of M wrestling program. And so I've had a chance to meet you know all the coaches, love the coaches, the great coaching staff. Our wrestling program is uh, is a special group of people as well. And so, um, so this, anyway, this uncommon fund, uh, raises money for programming around that to help equip and train not only, um, uh, not only, you know, the coaches, but help them, uh, help with their athletes. And so, yeah. so there's a lot of deeper, I could talk forever about that, but, and that, and that's a really special, special, yeah. special thing. And so. that dinner's local here, right? Yeah. yeah, so so um, we have it annually every April or May, the Uncommon Award Dinner out at Hazeltine. And it's it coincides with an event on Saturday at, at Grace Church, followed by some other programming with business business leaders. And so it's just a really great weekend. Um, and, uh, and Tony's been dutiful at, 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 at really helping Spearhead and lead it. I mean, it's really, it's, it really has, he's the decision maker around a lot of the things that we're doing with um, who wins the award and that sort of thing. But, um, you know, really Tony's been a huge, so since that time, uh, we've you know, Tony's become a big mentor to me from a, from afar, and, and now not so uh, far. Um, we we actually had a retreat out in Colorado a couple of weeks ago, where we actually had um, you know some some NFL coaches attend as well, and it's just really special to see the impact and influence, which ties into True North, the impact and influence that a guy like Tony Dungy can have that echoes beyond just his coaching, right? And so um, you know, and echoes beyond, like you see how people. PJ has 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 his leadership has, has echoes beyond just his coaching, and that's what's really powerful and why I think I'm drawn to that because um, the, the 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 impact and influence that these folks have is is transcendent. Yeah, and it's important. As you, I mean, the word impact itself tells you that it's important. They're impacting the community uh, locally, regionally, nationally, which is which is pretty cool. Um, you mentioned that you and um, this kinship that you've created with PJ. PJ was on the podcast in June, and uh, we we talked about you for a minute because uh, I was in the middle of thanking our sponsors, and you're one of them. And I said, hey, uh, you know, Brian Slipka is with us. And he commented on how you guys have, have really struck up a good conversation, a good friendship that um, – there's you have some things in common, similar kind of leaders. Um, how did how did it all really start went back at the beginning? We we didn't get in too deep. This is a good opportunity yeah, for yeah. us to talk about. Well, that. Well, I mean, I mean, uh, I think PJ. Uh, I just respect the heck out of out of PJ as a as a coach and as a public figure in the state of Minnesota. I mean, he's got a really hard job, and and I empathize with him. 
and Heather. I mean, they they are uh, they they, um, they have such a kind spirit with them and, and such a servant uh, heart when you get to know them on a deeper level. And so I, you know, it just being a, a booster and a supporter of the Gopher Athletics, I, I had a chance to, of course, meet PJ from really since he, he, he became the, the head coach. Um, but as we, as, as the years went on, we got to know each other a little bit better. And I think the, the common bond and the common unity is just this, how we want to lead and how we want to serve others. And this, and his role, the boat culture really does align with the true North culture and the way we go about doing things, uh, from a professional standpoint and business standpoint, how we train and equip leaders and, uh, to have it transcend just, just, just our, just not just PJ, not just Brian uh, and our leadership, but it transcend into the, the lieutenants, the coaching staff, in his case, in my case, the, the leaders of the different business units and businesses. And I, it's just, a, it's a, there's a lot of cultural alignment and so, and a leadership alignment. And I think that's what has, has brought us together a little bit from a friendship standpoint. And then also just being vulnerable. Um, you know, I, there's not a lot of folks I can talk to as a business leader that, that um, I can, you know, call and vent on and, or, or, or express, you know, my frustration. And I think PJ has a little bit of the same, same feeling and, and, and that's just healthy and, you know, we all need outlets and, um, and that's a, that's a really special, special relationship. Yeah. He, um, he specifically brought up and I've been at your office as well, which is not too far from where we're recording this, uh, in this neighborhood, um, the bourbon cabinet, <laughs> so to speak, that there's been a time or two where you guys have been able to, as you mentioned, vent or talk or just enjoy an hour. And, um, you guys share that love too, of, uh, occasionally, um, enjoying a, a high end bourbon. There, there you go. Yeah. Well, it's, and it's in the, in the fall and when, when fall hits. I mean, I just, it is bourbon season and, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, you know, you build in a relationship through shared experiences in life. Right. And, and, um, you know, probably one of my fondest PJ memories is, 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 um, after we, uh, af- after he and the team and, you know, we, as, as a state of Minnesota, uh, were able to, to get the pig back. Right. And, uh, and, uh, he, uh, he, cu- he, I, I hope he doesn't mind me saying, sharing this, but you know, he, he, uh, the Monday after, after the presser on Monday, he, uh, he, uh, texted me, he said, hey, you're at the office. And, and I'm like, uh, I will be in like 10 minutes. He's like, I'm going to be here in, there in 15. He, come, he comes by, um, he uh, comes up the stairs with this hundred and whatever yeah. pound pig. I think it's 98 pounds is <laughs> yeah. what Floyd weighs. And he yes. comes around the corner with the pig <laughs> and he's like, look what I got. And, and he's like, here, take, you know, this is your, you know, I mean, it was a really special moment, you know, for the, yeah. for the whole, all the people at, at, at our office. But, but more, and, and then him and I, you know, go and have, have a, a drink together to kind of wind down, wind down the day. Right. I mean, just to, I mean, the, 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 um, just that, that's, that's unique. That's yeah. special. And, and, uh, just so proud, just so proud of him. I mean, yeah. and, and, and by the way of things to come too, mm-hmm. um, you know, we have a tough schedule, uh, in the years ahead with the new big 10, the, the new conference. And you know what? I love it. I mean, I think it's going to be awesome. I think it's going to give not only PJ a platform on a national scale to show the, how great the state of Minnesota is and with the program he's built and the platform that the University of Minnesota has given him to, to let his light shine. Um, but, but like, I wouldn't want it any other way. Like we want that. We want that competition. Right. We want that schedule. And, and uh, so we should consider it like a, a, you know, pure joy that we get to have this tough schedule. I know a lot of fans are like, oh man, we're going to, it's going to be a tough sledding. We're, we're going to be, it's going to be hard to get to, you know, a certain kind of record. You know, guys, I would tell all the fan base, we, we, we should consider it pure joy. Like th- that is, that is a good thing. Yeah. And, and it's going to make our program better. It's going to be a rising tide scenario. It's going to allow PJ to, to let his, uh, light shine with, with a lot of the recruits and recruiting. So I'm just super excited about, about what the future holds for, for, you know, specifically the University of Minnesota football. Yeah. And I've watched, you know, coaching staffs over the years. And this, this group is like a machine. They operate, they work hard. They're putting in endless hours. They get like maybe, what, five days a year off, maybe, right, here or there. Um, but I think uh, with the addition of these teams, I've even noticed, I mean, they, there's somehow they found an overdrive. I mean, they're, like, PJ's, like, like working, like like yeah. he understands and he's taking the challenge. He's not shying away from, oh, boy, and there's four new teams. What are we going to do? He's, like, we're going to, as he said, we're going to run into the fire. Yeah, you know, you, need, you, you guys, if you've ever read the book Raving Fans, you know, I mean, it's a great book, but it talks about, like, the, the elements that have to exist to be, to, to really earn earn the, the trust to become a raving, ha, to have raving fans. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling everybody, all go for fans out there that are listening, I'm a raving fan of PJ, because if you read that book, 
you know, he's done, I mean, he is, what he does and what he sacrifices behind the scenes that nobody sees that he doesn't seek accolade, uh, you know, a- accolades right. around, right? And you've seen it, Mike. I mean, mm-hmm. the stuff that he and uh, Heather do behind the scenes with, with charities, with all sorts of different efforts um, that doesn't give, get him anything um, is, is, is unreal. And, and um, I think that bleeds into the culture of the football team and 100%. the staff and the, the, and the effort and the desire and the motivation. I mean, it transcends just PJ and it, trans, and, and, and it echoes into uh, the coaching staff. It echoes into the players and you see it in guys like Clay. You see it in guys, you know, the community that are impacted, like the, like the Children's Hospital. I mean, you see it there and I can go on and on and on. So like, I mean, how, what we have is so special in having him as our head yeah. football coach. Yeah, if people want to really get me going, um, they'll say to me, well, one, the, a question I get a lot, I'm sure when people find out you are tight with him as well, they'll say, is he really like that all the time? And the answer is mostly yes. Like there's nothing yeah. fake about him. I think there's this perception, though, created by um, whatever, that uh, he's just it's just an act. What One, it's not. But two, if he were fake or a fraud or whatever other thing you want to send out what he's doing here takes extra work oh yeah like like what what the, the commitment he's putting into as you mentioned the children's hospital and other, like if he were a fraud you do none of that no, you just come in and slap some signs up on the locker room and pretend you're saying yeah. row the boat and cash the check and move on he, he's the opposite of yeah, that. Yeah, he, he. I mean, he is. He is. Uh, he is transparent. He is who, who he is. Who you see. And, yeah. and the only thing I would even add is that um, you know um, uh, he uh, he surrenders the outcome more than we all realize. I mean, he 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 puts in the work knowing that there may not be you know um, the, the the outcomes he desires at times, and um, uh, he selfishly would desire right. But but he surrenders that just to do the right thing. Yeah. And and that that that's a big deal. That's a big deal from a leader. And so uh, you know anybody in the state of Minnesota. I mean, I mean, man, we are so, so blessed to have him as yeah. our head football coach. Yeah. And you're right. The schedule's tough. It should be fun. Um, it's going to be great. There's though, a couple of good it? road trips. Yeah. I mean, you can be in LA on one weekend and a few weekends later, I don't know which way it goes. You could be in New York. Um, you've got Madison and Champaign and Ann Arbor in between. So I had a, I had a company, I got to tell you this, I had a company meeting earlier this week with one of my businesses and, uh, and there's a, one of my, my, the, you know, the uh, salespeople who lives out in California, I was telling them about the go for football schedule. And we look at the schedule and you know, we play UCLA, I think October 12th, is it? Yes. Uh, I think they're 10th or one of those days. 12th. Yep. 12th. And, um, you know, at, you know, at a really nice venue, yes. right? Yes. yes. <laughs> and, and, uh, and we're going to, we're going to coordinate to have the, the roll the boat fan van, which you had, you've yes, seen Yes, I've before. seen that. Yeah. Um, you know, which where we tail, what we tailgate in, uh, to make it out to Pasadena. You're so. not driving it though. Uh, I'm not going to drive it, but, but I, I will be out You've there. got a guy. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. That's so, great. um, I'm, I gotta, I gotta figure out all the tailgate logistics, but, but yeah. we're going to, we're going to, we're going to live it up. And yeah. what, again, what, how grateful are we? to be able to do that. That's yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, as I watch PJ and what we've just talked about with his, um, he calls it serving and giving, um, the row of the boat culture. Um, you as part of the leader of, of true North also kind of have that. I think your term is servant leadership. You use a lot. Um, take me through why that's important to you that you're not, um, you know, just a, uh, 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 capitalist that's just going to, you know, I mean, it's not that you're not sure. making money, but you're also wanting to impact the community the way Tony Dungy, the way PJ Fleck, the way many have done. Yeah. So I'll, I'll try to make it really short. You know, if I've been on some business podcasts and I've gone into greater detail, but, but basically I, um, you know, I, I spent my twenties and thirties really working hard, working for the man, chasing, basically chasing, working in big corporate, chasing, um, you know, monetary success, chasing, um, all the life's desires of, you know, what, what, what life did and society defines as success. Right. And, and my dad in 2012 was diagnosed, diagnosed with cancer. He ultimately died in 2013 and in 2013, he entered hospice and I was visiting him one day over lunch. And you may have heard this story, I think, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, he was, his, he was jaundiced. His eyes had been become jaundiced at this point. He was definitely, uh, getting ready to pass away. And, um, I came, came in hot for lunch, uh, from work and I was complaining like about this stupid, you know, stupid stuff mm-hmm. at, at, at the office. And my dad stopped me and he said, Hey, Brian, I'm going to be dead here in a couple of weeks. Like, 
you know, <laughs> I mean, I mean, the, the, my, my dad was very comfortable with w- w- where he was yep. at in life and which is awesome. That's a whole nother story. But the, but he said, what on earth are you chasing? Seriously, Brian, what on earth are you chasing here? You have a great, you know, great wife, great life, great kids, you know, great job, great scenario, everything you, you think you want, like what on earth are you chasing? Like why? Like, you, cause, cause, cause you got to figure it out. Cause I'm going to be gone in a couple of weeks. I'm not going to be here to tell you that. Hmm. So he passes away and that sort of is, is what became the Colonel, which ultimately led to true North. And, and, and what that, and just like PJ has, has, has his story with roll the boat right. with his, with his child. So, um, that was my Colonel that really bega- began began the process of me creating true North, um, coming alongside the heartbeat of America businesses, um, and acquiring businesses coming alongside them and then helping people transition their life's work. Um, whether it be as a business broker, um, with Sunbelt, um, true North MA, uh, if a lower middle market, you know, more investment bank type of efforts, um, or with our, the holding company, which is totally separate, uh, but th- where, where we actually come alongside and buy businesses ourselves. And so I think, you know, that all started with this kernel from my dad saying, what on earth are you chasing? And, and so you, so the listener may be like, okay, what does that have to do with business then? Well, it has everything to do with business because what my dad also said, he was a small business owner and never made a lot of money, but small business owner, super generous pillar of the community. And what he also said is like, why don't you take your leadership skills and, and put them into small business and you can have direct impact, direct influence, and you can, you know, you, you're helping drive the American economy when you do that. I mean, half of the American economy is the American small business, right? I mean, people don't realize that. And, and, uh, and I've noticed it firsthand now since, since, since embarking on this journey. And, and, and so that's, that's, that's where the kernel started and it's led to this family of companies now. And, um, and, uh, and what true North is all about is having that impact and influence that transcends profit, right? So we got to make profit because we can't have impact and influence if we aren't successful, just right. like PJ and like, if you don't make enough bowl games or if, you know, you know, like we're, you know, uh, all the other coaches like coach, coach P, you know, the women's basketball team, I mean, you can go on and on, Ben, I mean, all these you, know, you aren't going to have a platform if you aren't successful. Right. So you got to do what it takes to be successful. However, you know, to what end and for, for what purpose? And for us, for True North, it's to have impact and influence in the businesses we serve, the communities we serve, the people that work with us and for us so that we can go forward and have an impact and influence in, in society and, and serve others. Right. So um, we take that deep, you know, that's deeply personal for us. And, um, and you've, you've witnessed that you've been to some of our company meetings. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's been a, it's been a fun process and a, definitely a journey. There's ups and downs, but, but, um, we, we exist to have impact and influence and, um, that fuels us. Yeah. Um, the Slipka foundation, uh, take, tell me about that. Yeah. So the Slipka foundation, my wife, Megan and I started, uh, probably 14 years, 15 years ago. Um, and actually just in the last uh, year, year and a half, we've renamed it the True North Family Foundation, and and so uh, what that's done is um, that just that uh, that recognizes and, and deploys a lot of what we're what we're doing in the mar- and uh, from a business perspective to have that impact and influence. And so we, you know, we, it's a three pronged approach. You know, um, it really talks about it, education's always been a pillar. My wife's a, a teacher; she, mm-hmm. she's got way more degrees than I do from a from a higher ed standpoint. And two from the University of Minnesota, um, so we were both alum. Um, but, uh, but basically it's a three pillar approach. We got education is the foundation, right? Mm -hmm. And then, and and then the other two pillars are community, um, community and character, uh, character building, right? So we really want to bring together those three pillars to have that impact and influence. And so really a lot of our, a lot of our, um, not only our giving, but a lot of our efforts are around making sure we're advancing those causes. So like, for example, you know, um, at the pinstripe bowl a couple years ago, like we, we came alongside, uh, and, and got a bunch of tickets for, for the, kids in the Bronx to come to the game because they, they, I wanted them to know what the rollerboat culture was yeah. all about. And so, so, uh, and you bought like almost a thousand tickets, right? 800 tickets or something. <laughs> yeah. I think it was something like that. Yeah. And, 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 and the whole, the whole point was obviously we wanted to help the gopher program and show that like as, as, as a, as a university that we can support, you know, these bowl games, yeah. right. Let's be real a little bit, but, 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 but even more important, it was like an opportunity because we have a platform of impact and influence. How can we deploy that? So now these kids, these at risk, 
kids or these kids with, you know, um, you know, big brothers, big sisters, you know, all these different places that they that they that they were able to uh, identify them. Got to see not only college football for the first time, got to go to Yankee Stadium for the right. first time, but they got to understand what the rollerball culture um, was all about, is all about. And um, to me, that that could echo that could echo for generations to come. So, like that's that's what I'm talking about. That three pillar approach of education, ca- community, and character building all coming together. Yeah, and when it involves a football game, even better, right? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody wins. <laughs> um, let, take me through, and we're getting into some philosophical things here now. We want to talk about your book, which you you have out, and um, it, it's getting rave reviews. Um, but I'm going to put that on hold just for a second, because I want it philosophically when you are leading a company. Like like yours, where you you own different companies, you're bought, you're also a broker buying and selling companies. You have to sometimes I mean, one as a leader, right? You always are having to make tough decisions, which might, on occasion, leadership is okay. I got to make this decision. Someone's not going to be happy, um, and to have the smarts, the confidence, at times maybe the ego to do this stuff. But on the flip side, if you want to be a servant leader, to walk that what I would call maybe at times a fine line to to know, all right, man, I don't want to make this person mad, but if we want to be successful, here's what the decision we got to make. And then how do you then, okay, here's how we're going to serve yeah. and lead. Yeah. Oh, it's a good, good topic. I mean, and by, and by the way, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, I don't have it all figured out. <laughs> um, I mean, I feel, feel like I stumble and, and, and have to get back up every day. Right. Uh, you know, I, I didn't say fail. I say, I just stumble and get back up. Yeah. Right. That's a big difference. Right. Um, but the, um, I make mistakes every day. Uh, but I think generally speaking, what I've learned over the years of leading uh, different businesses and frankly, d- you know, having to multitask in my leadership, right? Because much like PJ has an offensive coordinator, defense coordinator, a coaching staff, and then they have to go lead their position players and all that sort of thing. Um, that's how that's how I look at the world from a from a business leadership standpoint. I mean, I have I have really five or six kind of buckets of, of, of leaders that I uh, that I work with on a day to day basis. And then within those, there's multiple leaders, right? And so um, from my vantage point, you know, uh, it's all about how can I cast the right vision um, and then, frankly, get out of the way. You know, it's 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 um, I think where I've where I've run into problems or where I've I've had, um, you know, unnecessary what I call displaced energy um, that, that gets created is when. Frankly, when I insert myself into something that I have no business inserting myself in, like where I need to get out of the way and let and, and have my vision, the vision that I casted all of those folks and and the next next level leaders, um, let them execute and, and, and integrate and you know affect on th- on the vision, right? And uh, so I've learned a lot from that standpoint. And, th- and what that's allowed me to do, Mike, is scale, right? So you can scale. Um, you know, I, I talk and, and that where that centers around is surrendering kind of your selfish ambition or or, or um, control if you will. Um, you know, I, I uh, actually just wrote a um, um, kind of pen, pen something that got picked up, I think, by The Hill or a couple other publications that, that talked about the benefits of surrender and selfish ambition and why you and why you need to surrender selfish ambition. And for one thing, as a leader, it's because self selfish ambition doesn't scale. Like you're only as good as like what you're involved in and what, and what you're like, what you're, you're solely pursuing. And when you do, and and if if that's all you're all about, like you're going to hit your limit pretty quick or don't be surprised when you're disappointed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Whereas if you're focused on others as like folks like Tim Tebow talk about all the time, like serve, serve, serve. And like, like there's no limit to that. And so, um, um, Anyway, that's that's uh, really what 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 our leadership style really centers around. Yeah, and um, take us through just an overview of uh, share as much as you want. I suppose there's some trade secrets too, but um, just what the company all involves. True North. I know you own a baseball team. Um, you have a company, I think, in Winona that is it baseball bats? Yeah, pillbox uh, back yeah, that way. So yeah. t- tell us yeah. about some of the different yeah. fun things. Well, and- I mean, I mean, there's a there's a myriad of businesses. Um, they're all mutually exclusive. So, like you know, as, as anybody who's you know a business leader kind of knows you. you you know, like you, these are all organized independently. I have different partners and different businesses. So like they are, they are, but they are different entities, but, but it's a family of companies, right? So, so you have, you have a holding company that uh, has a lot of the, um, a lot of the main street businesses. Those are packaging and businesses, assembly businesses, distribution, manufacturing, manufacturing services, all of those, all those, but those are the heartbeat of American businesses. Those are all, you know, um, a lot of times there's under 10 employees. Um, some, in some cases, there's only a couple of employees. Um, 
um, all the way up to like, you know, down, down in Lonsdale, Lonsdale packaging, you know, uh, oftentimes we'll have as many as 140, 150 people on, you know, during the busy seasons. Um, so, but, th- but that's, that, that, that's the heartbeat of America companies. We call those ma- the companies our main street businesses, right? And then you have, um, uh, we have a whole transportation business unit, which is, has struggled the last couple of years because of the industry recession, but, but we're b- fighting through that and we're grinding through that and we're, we're looking forward to coming out of that even stronger. And, uh, that's transportation logistics. So, you know, over the road trucks all the way to, you know, um, uh, uh brokerage services, uh, and everything in between. Right. And, and then even with, with what we haul is we have refrigerator freight. We have LTL freight, which is, you know, last mile kind of stuff. We have a uh, flatbed. We, we, we haul windmill blades. Um, one of our businesses out in De- uh, South Dakota hauls windmill blades. I mean, crazy stuff, right? Yeah. Um, and then we have a finance, you know, I, I helped start a finance company, Honor Capital. That's kind of uh, a little bit separate. And we have a few other folks involved in that and um, uh, business partners. But um, that's growing. That's what, especially finance lender. Um, we have uh, True North Advisors, which is the holding company for Sunbelt Business uh, Brokers, as well as True North M&A. And those are really investment banks sort of services, um, main street business brokers. Um, we have a, a ton of, you've met a lot of them, a lot of the business brokers. Uh, that's where Clay is, uh, where, uh, where we help, we literally help come alongside, uh, sellers, uh, basically business owners that want to transition their life's work. You know, they've toiled for all their life. How can we be a good steward for them to write, find the right buyer that really fits their, uh, what, what they need and want. And a lot of times they want to get paid, right? They, they, they want to cash out. Right. And we understand that, but like, it's really we're matchmakers, making sure there's a really good fit for, for um, for that that, that the new buyer that's that's going to really steward the continuation and success of those businesses. So you can imagine how how deeply personal that is. Sure. Right? Um, and a lot of people recognize Sunbelt because of that, right? With our uh, with our involvement in Gopher yeah. Sports, um, and then and then uh, you have you have True North Sports uh, and Entertainment, which is um, which is um, includes the Sioux Falls Canaries. Yeah, um, it also includes uh, Pillbox Back Company and a few other things. That I, I'm I always love to say uh, my my partner that is Anthony uh, Twan Albanese, and him and I uh, for all you Gopher fans, we were college roommates at the, at the University of Minnesota, no at Carlson School. We both graduated from Carlson in the late '90s, and um, he went on to uh, to move to Chicago. Had a bunch of jobs at like PepsiCo and Gatorade and all that. Started a company called Duke Cannon. And, um, and then they're now based here in the Twin Cities, uh, co-founded with another guy uh, out of their uh, college or their Chicago apartment. And it became one of the largest men's grooming products. It's kind of like the modern day Old Spice, I like to say to people. And that's based here in the Twin Cities. And, and Tuan's no longer involved in, with Duke Canada, uh, really on an active day-to-day basis, but uh, still still involved. But um, but uh, he, so he and I rekindled our friendship uh, when he moved back, when we moved the company back to the Twin Cities. And uh, he's one of my dear friends and and so anyway we, we bought the canaries together and that was that's been that's been a lot of fun um i like to tell people like that's a labor of love and um we, we did that to frankly to be able to spend more time together and have a reason to have, have a reason to go watch baseball together yeah and our guy tanner hoops who people can hear doing go for volleyball on the radio he does our uh, halftime and some of our post game and some pregame segments on football he'll fill in for me when i'm doing football and can't do basketball he's filled in for guards on women's hoops um, he's the voice of the canary he is, yeah. Well, and and I gotta I gotta thank Greg Gerlach for uh, yeah. t- uh, teeing me up uh, there. He he, he uh, I think Greg sent me a text one time saying, "Hey, you got to talk to Tanner. He's he's uh, you know he he'd, he'd be available this summer." I'm like, "Oh my goodness, what a great fit!" Yeah. Of course, I, had, I already I already heard Tanner, you know, uh, in the, back in the studio a lot and all that sort of thing. And so Tanner, I think he's in his third. I think it's his third yes. season now, yeah. and. Um, he actually just went through uh, some surgeries and yeah. procedures, and he's doing well. And I'm excited to have him back uh, back with us here soon. Um, I love Tanner. Yeah. We're, we're very blessed to have him. I mean, he's a yeah, he's a great young man and um, does a great job. Yeah, I follow, uh, of course, him on on uh, Twitter X or whatever we want to call it, and they'll. Uh, the Canaries will tweet out the highlights. I'm like, man, he nailed that call again. He nailed that call again. And, and as you know, he's, um, you know, it, it's really remarkable, his story. We could do an hour just on him with uh, the different heart surgeries.
surgeries and his eyes, and he had a surgery this week, as you yeah, mentioned, yeah. and it sounds like it's all going yeah. well with his eyes. And um, he'd, he'd be a good amazing. guest someday. It really, yeah. really, yeah. yeah, yeah just to sure. hear his story because it actually ties into Masonic and, and the Children's Hospital. It ties yeah. into a lot of stuff. He's a diehard Gopher fan and just the heartbeat of uh, heartbeat of America kind of guy, right? Yeah. And and uh, just a just a huge sports fan. Is, is the voice of the volleyball team, yeah, as exactly. well. And uh, but so we're, we're lucky to have him in the summertime. And that's uh, and so anyway, the Canaries have been a lot of fun, and we're actually going to be um, you're going to be hearing in the in the in the future about us our involvement in another minor league team uh, uh, here. Uh, you know, that's uh, that I think will we'll take a lot of people. Uh, oh. A lot of folks will be interested in what we had to say there. And stay then, tuned. And, yeah, stay tuned in the months to come. <laughs> um, Nothing, uh, nothing over to announce or anything, but, but there will be some uh, special stuff to to talk about in the months nice, to come. Nice, very so, good. Yeah. Well, now you've got my curiosity peaked. <laughs> uh, Canaries are having a good year too. It sounds like. Yeah, I mean, we, um, I think, I think we, uh, we've been the best team in the league uh, pretty much all year, and uh, I think we, we, we're coming off a tough uh, uh, three games down in Cleborne, but, uh, but we, uh, we're still tops in our division. So yeah, it's it's been a great East season, uh, great cultures. That's another example of culture. We're in our fourth year of owning the team, and. and and we uh, and we went from kind of having a, a lot of work to do um, and coming off a really kind of tough season and being one of the worst in the league. And our first year, we were still uh, not not overly good. But we had we had the kernels of really solid leadership. Our manager, our field manager, was good. We had a general manager that kn- knew what he needed to do. But we needed to kind of rebuild the team, the team otherwise, and kind of rebuild around them. And so we built up. We have a great president out there now, Brian Jammers, who actually used to work at the University of Minnesota. Yeah. Um, and anyway, it's been a, it's been a been a fun journey. Yeah. Do you get to go to a lot of games? I know you're busy. Do you? Yeah, I mean, I try to I try to go to all the Friday games because yeah. uh, we have fireworks fireworks Friday. Oh, you um, go you know, for we that. we open up that we open up the right field after the game, and I get to talk to all the players, and, and sometimes I'll, I may be known to take batting practice, uh, nice. right, like at midnight um, uh, at the bird cage. Uh, it's kind of fun. Yeah, if you ever, I mean, if, when you own the team, you can take BP at midnight. Yeah, That's that, great. That, that is a benefit for sure. <laughs> um, let me quick here talk about one of our other sponsors. Of course, you're very generous as well, but we want to thank Affinity Plus. Talk about servant leadership and what they do with. Special Olympics throughout the metro area as well. The Polar Plunges. I think we're actually going to have some news uh, on that as well here in the next few weeks. There's maybe a Polar Plunge taking place on campus here coming up to help Special Olympics that Affinity Plus is helping with. They're your local credit union, proudly serving Minnesota since 1930. If you're a current Gopher student or a proud Gopher alum, you're eligible to join this financial that wants to build a meaningful banking relationship and put you first. You can meet with a local employee at any of their branches statewide. There's one right here near campus on University in Minneapolis. You can learn more and find other ways to connect at their webpage. It's affinityplus.org slash go gophers. That's affinityplus.org slash go gophers. Affinity Plus, federal credit union, federally insured by NCUA. They say people-centered banking, perfect for gophers. So uh, we want to thank them for their support as well. And of course, we have True North uh, on the podcast as well. All right, so let's talk about uh, this best-selling book you've got called Win Some. Ryan Slipka is with us. It's episode 130. Uh, tell us about the book and how it came about. Well, first off, I just got to comment. Episode 130, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's a pretty remarkable uh, achievement. So Here we well, are. Well done. Well yeah. done. Um, no, the book Winsome uh, is really, a, uh, it was a personal journey for me. Um, I, I never would have thought that I was going to write a book, certainly a book like this, um, never in a million years. It's a, it's like a 140 page relational fa- uh, fable, right? So think of like Patrick Lencioni, John Gordon, those types of style books where it's a story, it's a fictional story, mm-hmm. but it has some, some, some deeper meanings behind it. And, and, uh, and, uh, it leaves the reader with, uh, with some kind of sort of action items and things that they can do in their life to, to, to improve. Right. And so the book Winsome is really about, uh, just, uh, the five tool framework for relational success. Success, building deeper, more per, you know, personal relationships, and really it centers around what we've talked about earlier—a little bit of like surrendering the selfish ambition and kind of getting out of your own way uh, in the moment. And so the protagonist in the book is Sam. He's this aging baseball player, and it's just a really good story about. I mean, frankly, it's, I, I'm like a mild version of Sam. You know, Sam makes a lot of blunders like in, in public and then with his son in private and he just has this regret. So he's, he's he has the best of intentions, but then he but then he uh, just in the moment, he just doesn't respond the right way. And he and his head and heart aren't aligned. And and he's he's pursuing sort of he wants people to understand his plight. And and so then that leads to him making bad decisions. And and I just there's a 
it's deeply personal for me because I'm kind of a mild version of Sam. So there, it's it's fiction, but there's some truth. Oh yeah, tied yeah. So, into this, so weaved in. Anybody who's reading the book, you gotta just almost chuckle yourself, especially those that know me, yeah. because I I'm like a mild version of Sam. And and for me, it was cathartic to kind of write this because it was it really was um, this acknowledgement that I got to continue to get better. Um, and uh, and not that I'm you know not that I'm this you know terrible or anything, but like just just this the sanctification process that has to happen as we go through life and as, as we mature and we make better decisions, how we interact with our kids, how we interact with our spouses, how we interact with people at, at, at work or uh, in a professional vocation and just our friends and re- just relationally. And I, it's, it's, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a lot of really good messages in the book and, and it uses the kind of the baseball, this baseball, you know, um, uh, you know, analogy around moving around the bases um, in, in a, in a positive way to really build deeper relationships. It's called win some. And then the subtitle is five proven life strategies to win in relationships. So does the book, uh, is it, is it an outline or does those do those five pillars, so to speak, kind of, um, you have to find your way through to find them. Well, so I'll, I'll quickly just, just anecdotally kind of give everybody a teaser on it. The, the five tools is basically, it, it's a, again, a baseball analogy. So the first one is you grab your bat. Okay. Grab your bat. You got to grab your bat in life. Right. And, right. and there's a, a lot of story around that. Okay. And then so you grab your bat and then you got to go in the on deck circle. Okay. What do you do in the on deck circle? Well, um, you know, you've grabbed your bat. That means you have the, it's basically courage. You have the courage to step up. Okay. Then, then you go uh, on, uh, on deck. What does that mean? You look at the conditions around you. You're getting ready to surrender. You know, basically what does the team need out of me? Okay. Not, not what do I want to do, but like, what, what's the conditions? So, like, what's the weather like? What's, what kind of pitchers out there? You know, um, is, is, is it a, is the defense good? Is it bad? Is it like, you know, what are the conditions? Sure. Right? Is there a guy on first yeah. base? Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, and then you, and then you get to play the plate, right? And then you're, you know, you're at bat. So number three is at bat. And um, at bat is, you know, a whole different type of circumstances, right? Now you're at bat, like you're in the moment. And so like what you did by grabbing your bat and being on the on next circle was a, kind of a little bit of the preparation. But, but really when you're on, when you're at bat, you got to, it's a whole different deal. Like it's, uh, you know, we've all heard different life analogies like Mike takes and, you know, like it's, you know, um, everything, everything's the game plan's great until you get punched in the face kind of thing, sure. right? All that sort of stuff. And, and being at, at bat is, this notion of regripping, you know, pitcher throws a 96 mile an hour fastball at you. And you're like, Whoa. Okay. That seemed, I was, I wasn't expecting that. All right. You step out of the bat- batter's box, you regrip, you maybe adjust your batting glove and get back in. Right. Regrip. Right. Or, or, or maybe like, man, that shortstop's playing behind second base. Like there's a big gap, you know, you know, between second and third, or there's a runner on second. There's no odds. I know I'm a home run hitter, but like, what, what can I do to advance the team? Or help to help the team. That's all you know. At bad, and then fourth is RBIs. Like your 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 the goal in in the in the game is to drive in runs. RBIs, runs batted in, and a lot of a lot of uh, connotations around that. And then the last one is is basically the batting cage. Mm-hmm. So like in in the relational elements, um, you know, of life, it's very natural when you think about how you got to get back in the batting cage. What what did I do wrong? Oh man, I handled that situation bad with my son or daughter or man, I, I don't, why did I let myself get in that argument? <clears throat> Those are the types of things that, that, um, that we talk about in the book and, and, uh, Sam, the protagonist has a, has a interesting, uh, and, and sometimes harrowing sort of uh, journey to, to, to understand what he needs to do. How, um, did you come up with this idea? I mean, of writing a book, I think everyone maybe in the back of their mind, no matter what profession, what walk of life is always like, gosh, that I mean, it's even a, it's a cliche. Oh, that'll be in my book someday. Right. Well, most people don't get to do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how did it start? What was the process like? Um, how did this seed, um, <clears throat> and this story went out in terms of, I, I suppose you bounced a bunch of different thoughts about it. Yeah, it was really bizarre. I mean, I um, I, I didn't really have any plans to do it, but then I, as we were buying businesses with True North, um, a lot of folks were saying like, "Okay, what's what, what's your secret sauce? Like, what are you doing that's unique to to really help you?" And 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 a lot of you know, my response is always like, "Well, it's our purpose. Like, we're trying to serve something bigger than ourselves. Like, it's about impact and influence and all the stuff we talked about, right?" And they're like, "Yeah, but like, how you get like." these business owners, like, you know, so they're, they're like, they're selling their business to you. And then you're keeping them like most of the businesses we buy, the business owners stay like, it's not a, it's not one where they're cashing out. Like that's fundamentally a, a little bit different, frankly. Um, not, not, not always, but, but, um, oftentimes. And anyway, so, 
So I was asked like, well, how are how are you able to do that? And I'm like, well, you got to be relational. You got to be winsome in how you treat people. You got to be like, you know, you got to make sure that you're focused on helping them get what they want before you get what you want. And, you know, all these, all these cliches, right? And um, anyway, it sort of manifests itself into my self-reflection of, of how I, how I'm, when I'm at my best and when all of, most of us are, would say that we're at our best and then also reflecting when are we at our worst and what conditions exist when we're at our worst. And so, so it was just one of those reflections in life of how can I get this message out to help people understand that you're going to be at, there's times where we're going to be at our best and times we're going to be at our worst, but, but so, so much of it is self-awareness around, around it. And so this book really it helps Sam, beca- the, again, the protagonist, become aware of the conditions that exist that will allow him to be at his peak and maybe not his peak. And if, and if they are not peak conditions, how can you, again, the five tool framework, get your head and heart right to, to make the right decisions and, and uh, treat people the right way. Yeah. And, and so anyway, it, it sort of, man, it, it sort of, again, transcends into business and everything. 140 pages. So yeah. it's, it's not a novel, but it, which is good, right? PJ has yeah. his book was, uh, is a nice quick read. John Gordon, you mentioned him yeah. and we should have met not the, a lot of sports fans listening think maybe we're talking about the voice of the twins for all those years. I interned for John Gordon, by the way, that John Gordon <laughs> way back in the day, yeah. not that John Gordon, he's happily retired. John Gordon, the well-known national best-selling, uh, author, best-selling yeah. author who's been part of, of your company retreats and different yep, things. He has. And then he and PJ wrote the book, roll the boat. I mean, yeah. together, right? I yes. mean, it's PJ's book, but I mean, John definitely helped come alongside him, uh, with it and um, and John's you know like you said John's been a um, been a big part of my life too uh, from afar and uh, I've gotten to know John really well as well and uh, John actually you know was gracious enough to um, put a little plug in for the book as well I was on his podcast a few weeks ago which uh, um, which will be airing here soon too um, and and it's yeah it's the the format I think really fits our society today like you think about millennials and zennials and the younger generation listening to things you know they aren't necessarily going to read a 400 page self help book. Right. But they will, they, they will listen to or read a hundred, 150 page story, right. f- like story that's captivating, that teaches a lot of the same like principles and lessons. Sure. And so, um, it's a quick read. Um, my, you know, it's, if you can read it in a, in a definitely an airplane trip and yeah. it's like a two hour read. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, uh, so I, I hope, I hope folks like it. Yeah. I, no, no, no question. It's been good. People can, um, get, um, Hard hard copy book at uh, I see Barnes and Noble, Amazon, yep. and then there's also the Kindle and the and then there's their audio too. Yeah, there's audio too. And, and you have a unique story on who yeah, voiced yeah, it. Yeah, right? Jeff Gould. Uh, he's America the America storyteller. He's got this great uh, story. You know, it's called the America America story, and it, and it's a great. Deal. In fact, I'm thinking about having him come to Minneapolis and and and, and introducing Minneapolis to, to it because it's just fascinating. It talks about America and kind of how we came to be, and it's just a he's really eloquent in how he articulates. Yeah. It. And he's out of, he's out of Sioux Falls, and so I met him actually at a Canaries game. Uh, imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I just really thought like, man, like who'd be a good person to, to tell the story. And so Jeff, Jeff was, uh, was kind enough to, to be the, the narrator uh, and the audio version. And, uh, he did a phenomenal job. Yeah. And so, um, uh, he, but yeah, he, it's, uh, it's, it's it, him. He brings it to life. Yeah, that's great. So we, we can listen to it. We can read it. Win some, the title, uh, tell, tell me how that is what you came up with. Win some. Well, I mean, just again, this notion, um, like, you know, what are you chasing? Just all these things that you guys have heard even, in, in, this, in our time together, right? I mean, like my dad's story, right? I mean, like, Brian, what are you chasing? You know, and then, you know, building relate, deeper personal relationships in the business. Um, and, you know, how, do, how, do you, how are you connecting with people? What's your common thread of success? And I think, you know, I, I, my reflection was it's, it's not when I'm trying to win, it's, it's when I'm, you know, I, you don't have to win anything to win everything in relationships. Think about that. Right. For relationally speaking, you don't have to win anything to win everything, and so, so I think that's a little bit of like a reflection of what my dad was trying to tell me, mm-hmm. what, what a lot of the mentors have been trying to tell me, like the Tony Dungies of the world, um, and and then what I've experienced in the in the world of business, and so it sort of was a manifestation of all those things, and so you know being winsome, and I I, I found myself using the word like you just got to be winsome and kind of you know even even like in this political climate, like you got this, you know, you got two polarizing sides. Yeah, like if you're just winsome, like like this this book, like what you'd find is that you'd you'd, ha- you'd find all these common elements to to still have rel- deep relationships with people, even if you don't have the same views as them. And I think that is even sort of the timing of this is uh, is, is appropriate too. So, right. um, hopefully, people enjoy 
it. And, uh, and I think there's actually, I'm kind of setting myself up to, I think, continue Sam's story, um, uh, with, with some other, with some neck, become next, a series. Yeah, yeah. 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 We'll see. We'll see one, one, one story yeah. at a time, but I, yeah. I, I can see how Sam's journey is just beginning. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, you're, you mentioned your father. You mentioned some other influencers that have been a uh, key. You also mentioned you were a graduate here of the University of Minnesota. How do you think your time on campus shaped your being and your future and how it how it uh, advanced whatever it is yeah. it did? Well, this, this, this is kind of a, might be a silly response, but what I loved about the University of Minnesota was that I was in the Carlson School, and that felt like a really tight-knit you know, college experience. Like, so when I was looking at college, I was going to go play D3 baseball and ultimately I decided to go to the, the U and the Carlson school. Cause I got some academic, you know, I got into Carlson and all that sort of thing. Right. I was actually, I was the first freshman class before that in the mid up until the mid nineties, they didn't allow freshmen to join Carlson. You had to apply like as a sophomore or junior. And, um, so was a, we were the first incoming freshman to be admitted to Carlson. And, and so what I liked about it was like the friendly confines of a, of, of, the, of Carlson school where I yeah. knew pretty much everybody at, at this large, awesome, you know, sure. university. Yeah. Right. And so I was still able to have the, you know, all the, the, the sporting experiences as a fan and all that sort of thing. Right. So that was unique. And, and, and that actually sort of kind of carried into how I looked at some of my professional walks in life. So I always wanted to be part of like a, like a smaller group within a big, within a big, you know, larger environment. And so even like we look at true North, we have all these small companies in, in the friendly confines of the true North family of companies. Yeah. And I think that's the consistency and what I really liked about the U. The other thing I liked about the U is just the um, the, the fact that it's there's a lot of pride. There's a, there is a lot of Minnesota pride, and you know how many states our size because you know, we aren't a small state, we aren't a big state either, but we aren't a small state. Only have like a couple D one now. I mean, before St. Thomas, I mean, right. really, we're the only D one school in town, and and that's special. That's yeah. unique, and yeah. I, so it's just a we're, we're very we're very uh, blessed and grateful to have the University of Minnesota so so close by. Is that where your Gopher fandom? Uh, were you a fan growing up, um, and then this just helped. Uh, where you go? Did you yeah. go to games? Oh, as yeah. a I was, student I was, I was, uh, we were diehard. I uh, go for basketball fan throughout the, for, throughout all of Cle, uh, Clem's era, the entire Clem and Haskins era. Yeah. We, we, um, my family had tickets, including when I was a student, you know, I, you know, Clem was still a coach when I was going there. Um, and that was, that was an awesome, awesome run. And that really made me a gopher fan. Uh, obviously the football program was up and down, uh, you know, Gouda Kunst and Holt, you know, Lou Holtz and John, you know, John Gouda Kunst had us, you know, on a really good track. And, um, you know, I, and I was a big Wacker fan, uh, but we just, he could never get us over the hump, you yeah. know? And, uh, and then of course I was a huge Mason fan. So I, I I've been a fan my whole life. Right. Yeah. And it was really natural. Not only to go to the U, um, I'll never forget Wacker, my freshman year at territorial hall would leave, would leave us voice messages on our, on our, on our phones, like yeah, a the, rotary, the, the like real the, phone. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. real rotary <laughs> phones that were still in the dorms. Yeah. And, and would you have that blinking, flashing yes, orange light yes, or whatever? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it'd be, it'd be J- coach Wacker. And, and he would, and he'd be talking about, you know, Hey guys, you got to show up, play, you know, and you got students, you got to come to the game. And, yeah. and we would walk like three miles to the Metro, you know, they, yeah. now there's a campus connector buses. that would take you to the Metrodome as students, but we would walk. And, and now they've built all, you know, now it's all in, you know, and of course us bank stadium, but, but it was, um, it was a different kind of experience and we just weren't, we weren't quite as good, uh, not even close to being as good. Um, and, uh, and so that's what made made me want to help the Gophers, yeah. you know, take it yeah. to the next level. Yeah, and now here you are, these years later, successful as business. Now, as part of servant leadership, you support uh, the program, uh, the programs, uh, the the general athletic department as well um, through financial help. So it's a changing time. So I'll ask you. You can answer however you feel, but it is a changing time. So. What challenge, if any, is it now to kind of figure out how you want to navigate through to, again, help impact in a positive way uh, this gopher program that you love so much? Yeah, well, first off, um, I just, you know, I could talk for about NAL for a while, like I'm sure a lot of the listeners could. Um, I'm sure everybody has an opinion, but but it is, you know, the, a form of, some form or function of it is here to stay. Uh, the money is, is, uh, is required. 
And, um, uh, you know, we all need to, as Gopher fans, we all need to be willing to s- sort of look at w- how we can help. How can, what can we do as t- Tony Energy likes to tell all of us and t- certainly has told me, what are you going to do to make the situation better? Mm-hmm. You know, cause, cause we as fans can complain about it, but what are we going to do to make the situation better? And, you know, we are so, we are so fortunate to have such amazing coaches. We've talked a, a lot about PJ, but like, you know, coach P, I mean, Don at, for the women's basketball program, I mean, I'm telling you everybody like, look out like they're going to be good and Don and her husband Jay are awesome human beings and uh, and we're just super fortunate to be able to have her at the University of Minnesota and what she's done with that program already in a year I think just w- look out like we're going to be good yeah. so we got to rally and get behind her and try to help her right and you um, got to spend some time with her too right at, uh, at did you go to a playoff game with her oh yeah yeah, I yeah. Mean, yeah we went to a Wolves game together. Yeah, yeah. but no but yeah, the um, yeah uh, Don and Jay are just are great human beings. They 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 have a, a fondness to really uh, help you know help these student athletes, and um and she she's just a heck of a coach. I mean she's just got a very clear, very clear uh, mind around what she needs to do to make the program successful, and uh, has 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 proven it. I mean the the proven playbook to for her to be successful exists, and so so I think that's going to be um, a, r- a really good story. Uh, I'm really excited about them this year. Um, so I could go on and on about teams like the the rest program. I mean, I mean, Brendan and, and his, that whole coaching staff had yeah. a chance to meet the coaching staff. They're really good. I know like with some of the work that we're doing with Tony and Tom with the Uncommon Fund, I mean, we want to really help the wrestling program because, you know, they need to, they need, they need some help, you know, uh, with some of, some of their efforts and, and we want to be a, a key part of that. Um, and, and, uh, and, and their impact and influence on these players is real. And, uh, and then it, keep going. I mean, Ty is the new baseball coach. Yeah, I'm so, so, ex- right. so excited about Ty. Um, you know, I think there's, it's a, it's a new, new day, you know, and, um, and the freshness of, of having Ty and, you know, he's, he's a young, young uh, man who's just going to do great things. And, uh, but we need to step up and help, help him too. And specifically, you know, um, this NIL, I mean, these, those types of programs, you know, uh, every dollar that business leaders um, can, can, can contribute uh, to, to these specific programs goes a long way. And so I just, again, I would encourage anybody listening, like, even as a fan, like if you, if you have fondness for a certain sport or program, I mean, like, man, like, let 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 the fo- the appropriate folks know. I mean, you got Dingy Town athletes that are that's definitely being a good steward of it. But like even like this, I mean, in my opinion, I, and I don't know what the, all the rules are around this, but like I mean, like just just the, they need help directly. So. Yeah. Um, as a business leader, I mean, it, it, the, the gloves are off a little bit with uh, what we can do, and the NCAA has kind of opened that up. And so you see what some of these other schools around the country are doing, and I'm like, wow. Yeah. So uh, hopefully, hopefully, the state of Minnesota can start to rally around all these sports. And yeah. Really excited for to well, see what happens. You mentioned Ty McDevitt, the new the new coach uh, at, for baseball, and you here you are a uh, owner of a professional baseball team. You wanted to play Division three baseball, uh, and you take batting practice at midnight. So there's some interest there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with the baseball program here as a gopher, right? Yeah, yeah, and I think you're going to see, um, you know, once Ty gets settled, you're going to see um, see uh, see our team, you know, do some really great things. My son plays at St. John's um, up up uh, in Collegeville, and yeah. they got a they got a, a great great program there. And um, just again, I'm really excited to um, to see, you know, just uh, what what Ty can do with with those young men. And um, again, we have this chance to really, you know, I'm a, I'm a man of faith, and 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 I, I see like the, the how, like how this is emerging, the types of leaders we have. And I'm just really excited about all these coaches have this common thread of like really developing people. And uh, when you develop the right kind of people, like good things happen. Yeah. And and anyway, I just I'm, I, I, I trust in that, that process for sure. Yeah. And I was just on I was just on a radio show uh, with one of our affiliates this week. And they were talking about with this NIL, um, there has it, there has become a professionalism about the athletes. There's no question. And at some places it's like millions of dollars, other places, not as much, but still hundreds of thousands and sometimes thousands, whatever it is. Sometimes it's free merchandise as a trade off uh, to post that you ate at a place and you'll get free food. It, it could be as little as that and as much as six, seven, whatever figures. Um, that said, what I like here that's happening is um, I, I'm telling you, just being around it, they are still student athletes here, and there's so many good kids 
I mean, you hear it almost every week when I have an athlete on this podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they, they, they're they good. They're smart. They're ambitious. They're kind. Thank you. Yes, sir. No, you know, and it um, and so there is good here. Oh, my goodness. In college yeah. athletics, yeah. even though everybody wants to rip it. And is it perfect? No. And could things be better in certain legislative areas of the NCAA? All that. Yes. But at the very root of it, it's happening Good things are happening here on campus. I just want to say that, right? Yeah, for sure. And, and it, what it comes down to is it's people, uh, people leading people, and people mentoring people. And and and, uh, and what I am so proud of the university of being able to do is assemble a a, um, um, a lot of really good coaches and leaders to do just that with with and mentor uh, mentor these student athletes. And so I think that's a um, that's unique. Um, I, I think it's I think it's different. I think we're I, I'm 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 unapologetic energetically biased that I think we do it better. Um, uh, and that, that, that's a testimony to the athletic department and the leaders and all that stuff. But and by the way, we still, could we be better? Oh yeah, we can be a lot better. Like there's a lot of days where I, I can be frustrated as a fan, but, but, um, uh, and, and as a citizen in the state of Minnesota, but, but, I think we're pretty darn good and we're pretty, I'm very grateful for what, what we have. Yeah. And when you weather the storms, if, Hey, we want to be better, maybe this is, and, and I think you hit on it a little bit earlier when you talked about, I think it was your transportation sector. So even as a business that can translate to sports. Okay. We've hit a rough patch here. How do we uh, run in and fight through it and create a positive outcome? Absolutely. I was just talking to one of my business leaders. Um, you know, we, you know, this notion of we get to fight this battle today yeah. instead of we have to. Right. So um, now we may we may have to. Right. I mean, we, we have to. That's right. But, but if we, if we just allow ourselves to 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 rationalize that we we have to and that and, and woe is us. That's that's the that's what starts to happen. Woe is us, right? As opposed to we get to we get to fight this battle and figure it out. Like consider it pure joy that we get to actually have to strive and toil and have to battle through problems because we all know that when we do that, we temper ourselves, and when we temper ourselves, we can ex uh, basically withstand extreme heat or cold more effectively. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want out of these, not only these players, but out of our team, like even in the forms of wins and losses, like that's why like the, the, the tough schedule for the football program. And like, can, we should, we should, we should consider it like a blessing that we get to, we get to mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, play these right. incredible teams. Cause you know, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm looking, I'm, I just got done looking at the schedule the other day, like eight and four. I think we're a top 15 team. Yeah. If we're eight and four, we're a top 15 team. I mean, looking at our schedule like that, like that's what I'm talking about. And, 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 and I know I'm getting ahead of myself and Peter's going to be like, why are you talking about, you know, I, <laughs> Hey, I'm, all I'm saying is, is, I mean, if we're, if we're six and six, we're probably a top 30 team. I mean, that's the, I, people have to understand our schedule, right? But that's, what's going to make our program so much better. All the exposure and all of the opportunity to, 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 to shock, to shock the country and right. uh, for lack of a better term. So uh, anyway, but that, that can be correlated to life, right? Like, I mean, like no matter what you're facing in life, I mean, you know, when, when you have these trials and struggles or things that get thrust your way or thrown your way, it's like, man, like just look at like, okay, all right, all right I'm going to, I'm going to handle this. I'm going to, yeah. this, aren't we lucky we get to we get to face this today? I think <laughs> that was a little bit of what your dad's message was. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, amen. What's the, you know. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What, you know, what, because, and what, and what are you chasing in, in the, in the process of going through all your, all your, you know, you, know, you can complain, but what are you going to do to make the situation better? Tony Dungy, right? Give him total credit for that. And then my dad, like, and, and what are you chasing anyway? Like, like, what is your, what's the goal behind the goal? Right. And, and I think so many folks can rationalize uh, away their day, their week, their life, you know, their the years. And so, um, you know, whether it be win some, whether it be the true North family companies, whether it be even trying to, you know, come alongside these, the, the go for sports teams to help them be successful. I mean, hopefully there's a common theme that emerges throughout all of this. Right. Win some, you can get it at uh, Amazon. Uh, you can get it at uh, Barnes and Noble online. You can find it. Uh, it comes in a hard copy, comes in the, um, you can download the Kindle, right? Yeah, or whatever audio, it is. Yeah, Audible, all Audible that stuff. Audible yep. as well. Awesome. Well, we've gone over an hour. We could probably go another. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for coming on. Thanks let's, so much, let's, let's do it again yeah, well, uh, sometime let's down the do road. It, you're, sure. the, you're the third True North person to be on because we've had Clay and uh, and Ben on already. So awesome. Sorry that we didn't bat your lead off. But, uh, <laughs> no worries. Uh, we They're put far the, better we than put me. The, we put the three-hole hitter, you know. <laughs> there you uh, go. As you know, to use the baseball vernacular, that's, uh, that's the heavy-duty guy right there. Good stuff. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Brian Slipka, it's episode 
1.30. My thanks to our good friend and supporter, Brian Slipka, for joining me on this week's Go Gopher podcast. We learned a lot from him this week, and we appreciate his insight and his inspiration and his impact on the community. The book is called Win Some. It's available wherever you get books. More info can be found at winsomefable.com. Episode 130 is presented by Sunbelt Business Advisors and True North Mergers and Acquisitions. If you're buying or selling a business, visit sunbeltminnesota.com or tnma.com. We're also partnered with Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union, a locally member-owned full-service financial invested in you. You can learn more at affinityplus.org slash gogophers. That's affinityplus.org slash gogophers. Again, I'd invite you to listen to past podcasts, and right now, please click that subscribe button to the Go Gopher podcast. It's free to subscribe and free to listen at any time. And please share the link to the podcast with others so they can subscribe and listen as well. And if you've enjoyed our shows, please give us some positive feedback. We'll talk again next week.